Welcome to the Dreams Are Real podcast, where we aim to ignite the fire that allows you to unleash your greatest potential. I'm your host, Dan McPherson, and I'm on a mission to help you own your story on the way to building your ideal life. The first step toward achieving your dreams is to overcome the momentum of zero. Take a step and let that motion dispel the emotions of fear, worry, or self-doubt. No matter where you are in your life or career, only you can make that choice. The good news, you've got this. Why? Because dreams are real. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Dreams Are Real podcast. I'm your host, Dan McPherson, and I am thrilled to have you with us once again as we explore the mind of a very interesting individual. A new friend of mine, Damian Nordman, has a fascinating collection of titles. He is an author. He is a speaker. He is a course creator. He is a mindset coach. And once upon a time, he was a field director or president of the School of Metaphysics. What does that mean? Well, we'll find out together. And I I am so thankful to have you with us, Damien, to tell us what all of that even means. Hey, Dan. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. You are more than welcome. I am glad to for this opportunity for to learn more about you. You and I had a chance to connect a few weeks ago. We spoke for I don't know maybe an hour, and I was I was in. I was hooked. I was fascinated, and so I thought it would be a great opportunity to get you on the podcast. and And I think we would be probably doing our best service by explaining to the world what it is that you do. So when people ask you what you do, how do you respond? Well, I do say that I'm a mindset coach, although I don't know if that really does it justice. I often will say that I help people to be awesome, and I, I mean that in a just a very real, genuine sense. I've worked on myself for years studying everything from meditation to success principles to universal laws and different, not, not just tips and tricks on how to do that, but some really deep work on how to transform oneself and to be one's best self. So that's really what I help people to do is clear blockages to break through to success in different areas and to really know who they are, knowing their thoughts, their emotions, and their goals in life, and just being able to have more access to that on a daily basis so they can be happy and be healthy and be wealthy and have good relationships and just really have a very whole life and and whatever areas that they feel like they want to make better. In other words, help them be awesome. I like that summary. That's that's a very good yeah. thing. Before that, you worked for the uh, for for in the world of the school of metaphysics and most schools people hear it and they know what that means. I'm guessing our audience is wondering what <laughs> in the world is the school of metaphysics. Help us out. Oh my gosh, it's it's such a strange anomaly in the world at the School of Metaphysics. I was with it for a couple decades, which which was definitely plenty of time, <laughs> plenty to, to learn learn what was there. It's you know, it's a it's a school for adults that essentially teaches people many of the things I just described, but in a very specific format. And we did, you know, we would delve into not only meditation, but how to interpret your nighttime dreams, um, as well as as your daytime dreams, like your visions and things of that nature. And I mean, we would use so many different tools, everything from uh, different spiritual and mental practices to even studying the world's holy scriptures and, you know, really kind of mining the universal wisdom that's in the world's holy scriptures to... Um, you know, even just more modern things like we would borrow research from David Hawkins, if you ever uh, studied power versus force or, you know, so many, just so many different, again, that's kind of has made me who I am in many ways, but many different tools for people to use. And, you know, some of them seem kind of far out there. I mean, like we would even teach like lucid dreaming and how to have out of body experiences. But then on the other hand, we would be teaching focusing in concentration and how you can actually lengthen your attention span simply by doing this 10 minute concentration exercise every day. So it was, it was quite an adventure. It was quite a journey. I mean, we could just spend 
a whole podcast episode talking about that if we wanted to. But I'm very grateful for what I learned there. And it really uh, has given me a real foundation to work from now that I'm on my own and as a mindset coach helping people out. That sounds like a pretty incredible and a little bit far out uh, background. And I, I love hearing about it. It makes me wonder whether I should have had you as like episode one, dreams are real and let's interpret them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, man. I mean, that's, it's not, you know, I don't do a lot of work with other people these days with dream interpretation. I still write down my dreams. I remember, like I can tell you what I dreamt last night because I remember them every night. And there is kind of this pretty cool correlation between our nighttime dreams reflecting, you know, our waking state of consciousness. And then of course, how we use that with visualizing, envisioning, um, vision boarding, whatever, creating those images of where we want to go and who we want to become. So it's, 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 yeah, it, it is, it is very cool once you kind of see those connections. Sounds very interesting. You're you're looking for the the resonance between all the different types of dreams and bringing them together, bringing them out, putting them into clarity. That sounds like something that you've done a lot in your life. Back before you were interpreting dreams, when you were uh, when you were a young lad, maybe having dreams of your own. What uh, what was your dream? What were you hoping to be? You know, it's funny because I've been revisiting some of these thoughts in the last few years because they haven't really been fulfilled yet, but I, I do believe it's still, you know, very much possible. Um, there were a lot of things I was, I had dreams of creative things. Like I started learning some computer programming and was kind of trying to make some of my own computer games when I was young. And I was, I, I made some attempts at writing novels. I even, I even started to write a novel once with a friend of mine who Lo and behold, years later, he went on with a friend of his to make the cartoon series Avatar The Last Airbender. And uh, so that was kind of cool. He, he kind of sees our, our, our time together as sort of seminal to his work. And then the other thing that I really loved was, was like movies and that sort of thing. So uh, movies or television shows, you know, anything that tells a story. I, I love stories, which is why I love to talk. Like you and I have that in common. I think we love to tell stories. Uh, whether it's about ourselves or other people. And so that was sort of where I was at that time. And I think I needed to take this this sort of detour into mind and consciousness and self and development, uh, you know, because that's also, you know, very near to who I really am. Um, but certainly finding some ways to, I think, put all that to use in creative endeavors that are fictional that tell a story are a lot of fun too. A lot of different ways to put that together, and it and it seems from the the list of titles that I gave earlier that you found a few outlets, maybe more to come. Before you started looking for those outlets, even maybe at the beginning of those dreams, where where were you from? What was your environment growing up? What's the origin story of Damien? I love that. I, I love the origin story idea because again, it's it's that whole you know we're all sort of a superhero. Um, I grew up in Campbellsville, Kentucky. I was born in Campbellsville, Kentucky, and my parents were from Louisville, Kentucky. So we, we lived there till I was about 14, uh, and I had an older sister who was born in Louisville. Um, and so then we moved back to Louisville. So I actually lived out in the country for the first, first 14 years of my life. Um, we had about 76 acres of land, and as a boy, it was a delight because <laughs> I would have friends come over for my birthday or, you know, certain time, you know, just on a weekend and we would go tromping through the woods. We would build forts. We would, you know, play guns in the forest. We would, you know, just you know, not real guns, obviously, but, you know, <laughs> toy guns. Right, <laughs> we were right. not shooting at each other. Um, but it was so great to have that nature and peace and that stillness um, and animals, you know, we had some farm animals. It was kind of my dad's hobby farm, kind of secondary to, to what my parents were doing for work. So it was, it was nice what, to have What were that. they doing for work? Well, my dad by, by education is an engineer, but he and my mom started a, uh, they bought into a, a convenience store franchise, literally 
the name it was it used to be a franchise called Convenient, and uh, <laughs> it was you know like a corner corner store. Um, didn't even have a gas station with it, but um, they were not incredibly successful with that for a lot of reasons. But it was kind of cool to see them try their hand at entrepreneurialism, and uh, and again just having the the nature aspect, and then later moving to the city when I was in in middle school and high school. Not a huge city, but you know Louisville is a decent sized city, so it was a definitely an upgrade. So I feel like. Even though there were some like, you know, not wanting to leave my friends, I totally enjoyed having this country life for the first part of my life, my upbringing. And then, you know, when you're wanting to get out and do things, being able to have some city available was, uh, was a lot of fun. I like that. So how did stories come into that? Well, you know, I think just because I loved fiction so much. I mean, my, my mom was great. She, she read to me from a very young age until I could learn to read myself. And then I took over and would just devour books and we didn't have cable. We had, in fact, I only had three stations growing up and one of them was not even ABC. One of them was not one of the major network stations. I had NBC, CBS and a local station that had some pretty good programming on it at times and a lot of reruns of stuff. But you know, and this was just when VCRs were coming out. And so I read a lot. I read a lot of books, um, a lot of fantasy, a lot of fiction, um, both, you know, kid, kid level, but also I would pretty quickly got into more adult level reading Stephen King. I mean, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, just, I've always loved a good story. It's just kind of amazing to me what you can I mean, even if you look at the world's holy scriptures, the Bible is just one gigantic story, you know, a bunch of stories strung together into one. And uh, the, the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita, I mean, these are all just their stories. So I just feel like, uh, and people, if you look at how much television platforms and, you know, there's so many shows now, it's like, it's, it's almost kind of mind blowing how much, um, how much people can, can get lost in some of it. But when you find someone that tells a good story, it can change your life, right? I mean, whether it's a, a real story that happened, like more of a documentary or historically based, or if it's good fiction, you know, it can, it can move you, it can make you feel something, and it can teach you something as well. And is that what led you then not only to dream about the, this idea of sharing stories, but to take some of the paths you did later in, in actually sharing them was the hope of changing people's lives or was it more this desire to get it out of you, which I, I know many, uh, many creatives have as well as I've got to get it out. What, what was the drive to actually share them? You know, it's interesting because I think mostly it has been to the desire to help people. I mean, that's, it's kind of funny because before I found the school of metaphysics, which I actually started that journey at the age of 18 when I was still a senior in high school, um, I had this thought. I remember having this thought because I took martial arts, a couple different types of martial arts growing up. And I had this thought because I had a humanities teacher who would take his students out to his farm once a year. Like we were able to get off, get out of school for a few days and he had like teachers, other teachers come in and other people come in and teach us poetry and teach us outdoor education and like all these cool fun things. And it made me think that, you know, wow, maybe I should buy some land and, you know, teach people martial arts and some kind of higher principles or spiritual principles. And, you know, I mean, I kind of had this idea of brewing and then kind of wanting to benefit other people. And then I found the school of metaphysics and that kind of became my my outlet for that for some time. Although I think that idea that you're describing of the creative just needing to move it forward, I think that is actually becoming more real to me now um, and kind of moving forward that some of those things that haven't been expressed or told are starting to bubble to the surface. Talk more about that. What, what's bubbling to the surface? What, do you, what, what does it feel like and how, how do you believe it may look going forward? I, I think this is a fantastic thread for many of the creatives that listen to the podcast who are, who are feeling that same pressure. 
Well, I think a few things that come to mind. One of them is, you know, you and I were talking about getting our, our podcasts out there. And I think on one level, there are those of us, I think you and myself and, and many people, I think there's many people who want to make an impact on the world. And that's, that's one thing that I think is somewhat inherent to all of us. Like, I think we all want to do good. We all want to help, whether it's our family or our group of friends or our spiritual group or a broader group, you know, like impacting humanity or the world or, or as many people as we can. I think we all have a desire for that. And that's certainly true for me. And then to kind of bring it back to the story avenue, I, I feel like there can be stories told, like even fiction that I can write and turn into television shows that incorporate some of the deeper truths that I've experienced or incorporate some of the even metaphysical experiences that I've, I've experienced and other people too, because there are a lot of people who have tied into things and had meditations or lucid dreams or out of body experiences or um, even intuitive experiences and telepathy and this sort of thing that I think can open people's mind to, to then just learning how to live a better life right? You know, learning, learning some universal laws or success principles that they then take and having just a few simple practices, you know, a person can radically transform their life if say they meditate for 10 minutes a day or, you know, if they're willing to do a visualization exercise or a breathing exercise every day, it can have a huge impact on not only your state of mind, also your health, also, how you communicate to people, how good of a listener you are, how well you speak your thoughts or are willing to describe what you're feeling or what you're thinking. So I see just a thread of connection between so many things that can really benefit people. And I'm just I'm looking forward to the next five to 10 years of where I'll be able to give that and also just the people to create with and learn from and people like you to, you know, connect with and make new friends. So such a it's such a great journey to go on as you share so many different things some of which sound very practical and grounded and maybe more commonly understood some of these universal truths that you mentioned some of which sound maybe a little bit further out there or maybe in the edge of people's comfort zone or even in their even in their level of of skepticism as you get into visualization and lucid dreaming and 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 dream interpretation it sounds that you work really hard to blend those together, but I'm, I'm guessing that one of the challenges you may encounter is skepticism among those that you, skepticism or confusion among those that you would work with. How do you, how do you handle those questions or those concerns that people have? And what would you say to those who are maybe skeptical of that half of what you do of an interesting blend? That's a fantastic question. And I really dealt with it, throughout the time that I was with the School of Metaphysics, because even the name of our organization at the time, you know, metaphysics, it's like that for some people could be very triggering. Other people were just like, what is that? Or they thought it had to do with, you know, physics or quantum physics. Um, and so now it's, it, it's been an interesting journey these last few years for me to do exactly what you're saying. And even in some cases, let go of some of those things in terms of how I, I initially present myself as I'm sort of feeling out the world of, you know, somewhat more corporate world, somewhat more business world, um, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who I work with. Um, but it's also interesting because I found that a lot of people are already into this stuff that you would not even think are into it um, in some form or another, you know, even the entrepreneurs I've hung out with at masterminds in the last few years, in, inevitably, it seems like each one of them is into something, whether it's meditation or whether it's astrology or whether it's, you know, some form of spirituality that they're really big on that they're you know pretty open with. So, you know, it, it's, it's an ongoing, all I can really say is it's, it's sort of an ongoing experiment for me to, to find that blend. And I think as long as I'm comfortable with whatever I'm talking about, it seems, I seem to draw people to me who are also really interested in whatever aspects of it that I happen to be able to give them. So, you know, we'll see what happens in the next few years with that. 
I got that. And I appreciate the, the explanation of maybe how you, how you deal with that. It does having this blend of really practical stuff that almost everyone accepts along with these other pieces that may exist along, uh, along the edge or the fringes of, of people's general understanding. Does it help that you're mixing those two together? And I, I ask because most people that I encounter tend to be like so many things in our world, pretty divided in one camp or the other, as opposed to blending the two. And, and it seems pretty unique for you to blend all of that together. Yeah, I, I love it. And I think that it does help because there are people, I, I feel like, you know, we're always going to have people who are very black and white or very, you know, very, very much one extreme or another. I think that's part of the beauty of, of our amazing sort of diverse world. However, the people who I've met who, who do this well, who, who, in fact, I'm about to start with a coach who he's been doing this for a few years and he's had a lot of success making money and helping people using similar principles to what I teach. But yeah, I think that for example, like you might have somebody who is way out there and they just seem so cosmic that a lot of people can't relate to them. Right. And so that that's one extreme that I think turns a lot of people away. And then, you know, you might have somebody who's so nuts and bolts business and so very grounded in physical reality and just the, the, the very, very, very baseline physical steps that I think might not be able to inspire people very well. And so I do feel like that the blend is, is working for me and I feel like it's going to pay off even more kind of going forward. Cause I also believe that kind of where humanity is going is, is this blend. I mean, the Eastern and Western thought is, is blending more and more. And so I, I really do believe that uh, you see it a lot in the health industry, right? You see a lot of alternative health, health methods, acupuncture, um, yoga, breath work, a ton of stuff, you know, is, is come from either the East or just from offshoot places. And, uh, so yeah, I think, I think it's ultimately a, a really good thing and, and is, and will help me a lot. So it sounds, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like what you're really doing in many ways is, is in your greatest successes, taking people who might be on the extreme, helping pull them back toward the middle, create a balance, which then leads to freedom and success in their lives. Yeah, I hope so. I haven't necessarily in, in in recent times encountered anybody of too much of an extreme, but you know, there was a student I had, for example, at the school of metaphysics, actually he's one of my best friends now. And he was a corporate attorney for a, basically a company that um, had dealt with, with travel, helping people book travel and all this sort of thing. And, and, he was brokering these, you know, one and two and three billion dollar deals. And he was of a very, you know, of that sort of very business mind because he was a, a business attorney. And his experience with learning how to meditate and some of these other principles has completely shifted his life around. And now he considers himself a Buddhist and he meditates and he, you know, has studied all these things and has helped his marriage tremendously because his wife was also a student and so they were able to, you know, to really bring some things forward. So yeah, it, it really, it can do that for sure. It can, it can bring people from the extremes and let them at least taste some of these other things, if not gain a little bit of immersion. That's tremendous. And I know that meditation and breath work and all of that are one of the most popular pieces of success cited by really high level entrepreneurs as a key component that move them forward. And that, so it's, it's nice to hear that wrapped into these other things that we've seen as practical. You're just, you're just making that more normative. So many things in the world already, as you, as you suggested, acupuncture, chiropractic, many other things that may have been seen as alternative medicine for year are becoming more mainstream and yoga, breath work, all, uh, all of these pieces, meditation are becoming that as well. And it's nice to see that you're able to bond those together. In addition to being a creative and story focused, all of all of those things, do you also consider yourself 
an entrepreneur or with, or with an entrepreneurial mindset, or are you more focused in a different way, would you say? You know, it's funny because I, I actually wouldn't, I don't even know if I've fully identified with that creative side of myself yet in the sense that I haven't necessarily brought out the, the creativity that I think that I can. Um, I mean, I do consider myself creative because I think we're all creative. But as far as you're saying with the entrepreneur, in some ways, I would say I might have always identified as an entrepreneur, even if I didn't have that word right there available just because there were a lot of things I did in my youth that that sort of were kind of self-directed and then when I was with the school of metaphysics as a director we we were very much it was very much up to each director to build a school and so there were a lot of entrepreneurial types of things from you know the marketing or the media that we were able to set up or other forms of marketing that we would have to do to how to work with, you know, how to work with some of the administrative things to, you know, we had a certain structure we had to abide by, but then there was a lot of leeway (laughs) as well. And so being able to kind of create those structures and be self-driven definitely is something that I have identified with. So I think Ultimately, that that I think that's a lot of what being an entrepreneur is all about. Was running a team, or in this case, I guess a school, was it different than you thought it would be? You know, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I had a pre, like a pre-thought way of of seeing it. I kind of <laughs> eased into it. What I will say is that I, over the years, I allowed myself more leeway to innovate. And to kind of allow that to be more of an expression of, of my true self. And that was when I had the most success. In fact, for about six years, I was in our, at our Dallas branch and had the largest branch in our organization. And that was really fulfilling to me because there, was, there were at times struggles, kind of like what you were saying. I mean, people had a bit of a struggle feeling like they could convey some of this more esoteric knowledge to the common person and not feel weird about it. And at first that was my case because it's like, oh man, this is kind of out there. But then as I got more comfortable with it, uh, it just, it became so much a part of me. And then, like you said, actually it was sort of a foray into learning more about leadership on my own, studying people who taught leadership, um, John C. Maxwell and some other people, and, and really kind of just embracing that more fully then I was like, oh, okay, I really just need to lead better <laughs> and I need to be able to teach things that I know and, and let go of some things and focus on people's strengths more and build them up and turn them loose. And, you know, as I did that, um, it's just amazing. I mean, I love that. And, and I don't necessarily have a team to work with right now, but I do sort of crave that and look forward to having that again because it, it can be so much fun to – not only, you know, there, there, I think there's different ways people see leadership, and I really see it as teaching, guiding, you know, getting out of the way, inspiring, um, building people up, providing some vision. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of aspects to it that I feel like can go into it, but it, it does provide for a lot of growth for everyone because we have what seven to eight billion people on the planet, and I feel like we're here to learn with each other and from each other. And if we're not, <laughs> it's kind of like, what's the point, right? Right. As you, as you learn forward and you, you look to get into those seven or 8 billion people, what, what is your dream? If you, if you look out and, and you shared what your dreams were as a kid, this creativity and getting stories into the world, you've talked about what you were trying to accomplish at the school of metaphysics. But now that you're in this, in this new space, you're on your own, you're a coach, you're a course creator, you're doing all of this. What is your dream? That is such a great question, Dan. I'm, I'm glad you're asking it because I don't often get asked such a great question that is it kind of allows me to just go crazy as I see it go wild. Um, which is, you know, I think I, I've had to sort of revisit this because it's gone through some ups and downs, this vision and this dream. And I really, you know, what I, I want to have an impact on the world, a much greater one than I've had so far. And I feel like I've, I've helped a lot of individuals 
Uh, and I still want to help individuals because I feel like there's a depth to that that's always irreplaceable. At the same time, I would really like to turn what I'm doing into forms of media that people can receive and, and become inspired and then have resources and courses and coaching and ways to go deeper because I, I really do believe, I mean, from my experience of having teachers and coaches and mentors, which have transformed my life and also doing that for other people, I, I just want to be able to offer as much love and truth and wisdom to the world as possible. And I do think that, you know, oftentimes there's only a certain number of percentage of people. I, I hear statistics like 2% or 3% of the population are ever going to be interested in like self-improvement. I don't know if that's entirely true, but could be, um, maybe it's increasing, but I do believe that as people are entertained, you can plant these seeds of, of wisdom and truth and show through different media and through, you know, television or movies or, or storytelling or books where, people start to get the truth and you don't have to really even beat it, beat them over the head with it. Right. I mean, it can be subtle. Sometimes it can be more overt, but I, I really foresee being able to reach people through the, through these forms of media and then having ways that they can then learn through coming to coming to some live experience or being in a course or having a, a one-on-one -on -one mentor, um, so that whatever they want to do, and just like what you're saying, you know, you, you want to help people fulfill their dreams. I'm totally on board with that. And I think that's one of the highest aspirations any of us can have is to help other people come to realize those, those dreams fully. I mean, again, why are we here? <laughs> right. I mean, if not to, if not to do that, but so many of us don't have the tools or we've, you know, been led down a, a sort of a, a dark path of, Oh, you can't do this and you can't be that. And well, they'll never make money at that. And you, you know, and like the litany of a thousand things that, that we've been told even to today where there's so much potential. So, you know, really unleashing all of that. All right. That's unleashing a lot in a lot of different directions and a lot of different ways. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, looking to change people's dreams in a pretty broad way. So or help them fulfill them in a pretty broad way. Sounds, sounds exciting all around. Would you say at this point in your time that you've had a maybe a defining moment as from an entrepreneurial perspective or from a creative perspective? Uh, have you had the, this moment that you would say this was an inf I, I, maybe I like the term better the inflection point, an inflection point for you that really twisted things and said, here's the direction I need to go? Wow. Um... <laughs> I don't know that I have one specific one. Um, maybe I do and I just haven't thought about it enough. I think that probably the two, interestingly enough, the two things that I can say are probably the most impactful that I can, and this is such an alpha and omega sort of thing, but the day that I started at the School of Metaphysics opened my mind to things that I had kind of contemplated but didn't know existed, um, which set me on a path, which certainly changed the course of my life. And, and through that, already many other people who I've taught and served, because I, I wouldn't have been there to, to serve them. But then leaving the School of Metaphysics, which actually was 22 years to the day that I started, um, leaving the organization set me on a new path and some of it, the, the completion of that and the leaving was not entirely pleasant, but necessary for me to grow to my next stage and to move in and start to become who I am now uh, and, and who I really, who I will become. So, you know, the one was sort of connecting with a group and a certain ideology and things that have helped form my identity and then the other one was breaking from that so that I could really spread my wings and start to become an even greater version of myself. So I guess if I had two, those would be the two. <laughs> or no, I had fine. not one, but maybe two. <laughs> no, that's fine. I think most people in their lives probably have six or eight before we're all done. As, mm -hmm. and, and those are important to recognize. A lot of times we don't know them as we're going through them. We only look back and see them. And sometimes they're 
a smaller moment than we might have realized, but it's good to identify them and recognize the impact that they that they have on the on our lives. As I think about your journey, you've come so far in these last really 25 years, I guess, of the of the journey from high school through the 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 uh, through the school of metaphysics, through all of these things that you're doing now. And we have many new entrepreneurs or, or people who are considering jumping off the magic cliff to do something. So I love to ask people what lessons they've learned. And maybe this is really important for you as well, right? You're, you're taking uh, several new steps forward right now. So what, what would you take forward and say, this is maybe the biggest lesson I've learned that's crucial to me? Uh, are you saying that more as an entrepreneur, the or biggest lesson? An entrepreneur, a, a creative, a, whatever it is that's moving you forward that you think would be of help to others, but what, what's a lesson that you hold dear that you say, I've really learned this and it's, and it's mattered in my life? I, I think I, there's two things I would say. And one is that where your attention is and your thoughts are, are most important and, and having thoughts and a focus of your attention that makes you feel good, that inspires you, that uplifts you, that's paramount. I mean, to find ways to do that every single day and to be, um, whether it's coming from meditation or coming from listening to a podcast or talking to a best friend, you know, that, or whatever, whatever does it for you, being in nature. So having a focus that is uplifting and, and that is um, make, in any way making you feel good about your life and yourself, that would be number one. And number two is just as important, which is to find mentors and peers, friends, mastermind groups, anybody, a coach, anybody who can help you to do all that, that much better. I mean, certainly I felt kind of lost for about a year, year and a half after I left the school of metaphysics. And one of the things that really helped was a friend that kind of pointed me in the direction of someone who became my business coach for a year and it just you know somewhat being around him helped and then being around his mastermind really helped me because it can actually it led me to you <laughs> because it connected me to Michelle who you know this kind of this law of relativity sort of thing um but it also inspired me I got I had to meet so many people who were doing things that I I kind of wanted to do or I took pieces of what they did um, or just even to say, wow, well, if they can do this, well, geez, I should be able to. So I think having some form, whether that's one coach or whether that's a group of people or both, um, I think preferably both, it's just, it's so valuable because we don't do anything by ourselves. I mean, we just, we can't, I mean, it, you can try, but you're always going to need someone to, to, to guide you or give you something to point you in the right direction. And, you know, hopefully you do that for other people as well. So those would be the, the two, the two main things I would offer. I like to say you can do it by yourself. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. However, it's the most expensive, most painful, longest path that you could possibly take. Yep. Uh, so it's, uh, yep. it's, it's inconvenient and uncomfortable to say the least. You think of these lessons and then we also think of, things that we wish we'd known. Like I, 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 as I am speaking to my son, sometimes I'll say, I wish I'd known when I was your age, this thing. What is something that you wish you'd known when you started? Mm. Oh my gosh, there's a list a mile long. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it depends, I get, oh man. <laughs> Let's see, something I wish I had known. Um, I think probably the biggest one is is simply that I, I started to allude this with the first answer to your last question, but I'll go a little further with it. I wish I had known that it was my emotional state, my 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 vibration that was attracting to me the pleasant and unpleasant experiences in my life. I really do believe that, and I. The, the longer I've the more I've learned about these things and gone deeper with it, the more I've seen it come to play true in my life and in the people's lives around me. And so to really take that a little further would be just to say that I have to follow my bliss because when I'm following my bliss, when I'm following my joy, 
when I'm following my, my heart, my true calling, things work out really well. And when I start to deviate from that for a length of time, you know, stuff hits the fan. So, <laughs> you know? so it's taking the law of attraction a step further and, and also looking for, for your flow and making sure that you're, you're working in the, in that space. It's a little bit like, I guess if you, if you play golf and I don't, it, it is uh, it's, it's a little bit like staying in the middle, staying on the fairway in the green, as opposed to getting in the rough. If you, if you play where you're supposed to, where you're meant to, then you end up with a better experience. That's a, it's a good lesson. And one that I wish I'd known a long time ago as well. I think maybe I saw sparkles of it, but instead I decided <laughs> to move a, I decided that I must know better and I must go do it like everyone else and do, do the things that I felt I had to instead of the things that I felt I should. And I'm glad now that I make different choices, but it would have been great to have made those choices 20 and 30 years ago. Yeah. Amen. As you think about, being an entrepreneur, and you said this is, this is something you've considered yourself for a very long time. What do you think is the most important characteristic for being a successful entrepreneur? I think that's pretty easily the willingness to learn and grow. I mean, I think that's the most important characteristic anybody needs to have if they want to be successful at something. Because as soon as you think you got it figured out, then you, know, you stop learning and growing and you start making mistakes and you don't learn from those mistakes and you know, things start to pile up. So that ability to be teachable, to be coachable, to be curious, really, um, to have wonder about things. And I mean, I'm not perfect at any of those. I mean, I definitely have fallen off the wagon and been stubborn as heck so many times, but you know, I, I, that's why I'd say, um, the people who, who, who do that well and consistently and, and the more I've been able to do it, it's just, it opens you up to things that you just, ideas and possibilities and collaborations and ways of doing things, or you think that you want to do, you want to be this person, but if you open yourself up, maybe you actually could open a door to something that's even more true to self and more lucrative and more, you know, impactful. So that openness to curiosity and growth are, I, I really do believe are, are paramount for anybody. Be more curious is one of the top pieces of feedback that I received pretty late in my career. The last couple of years that I was working as an employee and leading large teams, the feedback was, look, you're doing well, your team's doing well, you're, you guys are performing, there's lots of good going on. The thing you need to do is be more curious. And that has resonated through my soul for the last several years and is one of the top things that, that I teach as well. So I, I definitely get that. It is, it's been, this has been part of a, a scintillating discussion, not only f during each of the podcast episodes, but within the Dreams Are Real Facebook group a, as well, with 20 and 30 different answers that are all really positive and really powerful that would serve for someone who wanted to read that thread as a good list of, uh, a good checklist of things that I need to have to increase my likelihood of success knowledge is it and curiosity is at the beginning of it it's even at the inciting of me asking that very question so i appreciate it for sure as you look back and you think about all the different resources that you've had access to which are maybe many more than most are there any particular resources books people classes environments coaches anything like that that have made it easier for you to chase their dreams and might by proxy, make it easier for some of our audience to do that for themselves? Mm, man, again, there are many. Um, trying to think if, if there's a, if there's any specific ones, I would just really, it, it's hard for me to say any above others, but I'm going to just throw some out that, that I really feel like are some of the best things that are, that are, I've consumed or received. Um, Jack Canfield success principles book, is a good one that certainly is you can you can consume it on a lot of different levels and I think for a business type person uh, or an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial person is very good um, a, a book that I've listened to twice in the last year that I feel like could open your mind to some things is becoming supernatural by J dr. Joe Dispenza because 
it kind of breaks down some of the things I've described today and brings the neuroscience and the quantum physics and some of the more practical aspects um, into light and how you can maximize your potential. Um, and then beyond that, you know, just any of, any of the good books on law of attraction, you know, like the Abraham Hicks material, I feel like is excellent, especially the, the last 10, 15 years. If you want to, if you want to learn how to take advantage of some of these universal laws and principles, um, I feel like they've got some good stuff, but I mean, really there, there's so many I could mention. Um, Atomic Habits is one more that uh, by James Clear for developing new and better habits and, and releasing some old outworn habits. So those, those are a few that are kind of top of mind that I could, I could recommend. Always a long list and lots of opportunities. I just downloaded Atomic Habits the other day and I'm looking forward to listening to it. So I'm so I'm good close on that myself. I, you're the third or fourth person to recommend it to me and I look forward to it. As you think about dreams, and you've thought about it way more than most, what does dreams are real mean to you? Really that anything is possible. It's something that I, I you know, I want to say that I'm, I, again, I, in some ways I feel like I'm just beginning my journey. I mean, I'm going to turn 44 here in less than a month. And I, in some ways I feel like I'm just starting out. Um, just in so many different ways, but I would say that anything is possible. And if you look at anyone who has built themselves up from seemingly nothing, I mean, we all have something to build upon, but whether you're talking about the, the more obvious people like Tony Robbins or, um, Chris Gardner, who the movie, uh, pursuit of happiness is based on or Oprah, or, you know, anybody who has achieved anything that they really wanted, and they just came from humble beginnings, you know, it, it was really from that belief and the vision that they could do it. And they just, they didn't give up. And they kept finding, you know, they followed the law of relativity, and they kept finding the next opportunity, the next person, the next mentor, whatever it might happen to be. So that's really what it means to me. It's, you know, I could, I could be like, oh, I'm 44 and there's like a bunch of things I haven't done. And, you know, I've done some stuff, but, uh, you know, but, or I could say the sky is still the limit, right? And, and no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, um, your race, your gender, your preferences of any type, that is just really, I really believe it's possible. If you've got a, a decently functioning mind, which most of us do, um, you can, you can do just about anything. So, yeah, just absolute limitless possibilities. And I appreciate you inspiring more and more people to, to see that because the world can, can never have too much opportunity for people to, to expand their mind and, and go, go do it. I appreciate that. And I'm glad to have the, the conversation with so many people who are examples of the truth of that statement. In fact, when we think of you and when you consider yourself and what others may say as they look and say, you're a speaker, you're an author, you're a connector, you're a course creator, you've run a school, you've done all of these things. And many might look at you and say, you are an example that dreams are real. How do you feel when people say that about you? You know, I, I, I really just try to receive it and allow it to sink into my heart. It's kind of like if I was talking to a friend of mine earlier today before this podcast, and she was a student of mine in a course I created, actually the first course I created on my own just a couple of years ago. And we've remained friends and kind of help each other with our businesses. And it's really cool because through at least partially through the influence I've had on her, she is now starting to get some opportunities to, to further launch her, um, you know, her health courses and courses for pregnant women. And, and she does some other health related business, you know, opportunities that are starting to, to move. And, you know, she was really grateful for just my presence in her life. And so and I think, you know, me having a podcast and she's now thinking about doing a podcast and 
you know, she's never really gone deep with coaching people and I have. And so that's been an inspiration to her. So, you know, anytime someone gives me that feedback, I just, I really try to let it sink in and just go straight to my heart and just to, you know, feel gratitude. I mean, I think at the end of the day, more appreciation and gratitude, which we can all use more of in the world is not going to be harmed by. So <laughs> let's, 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 let's bring it on. Appreciation and gratitude power the world in a positive way. It's a good thing. As we begin to wrap up, we move into our fortunate five. These are quest the, the questions that we ask every guest about things that we're maybe fortunate to have done that we'd like to be fortunate to do, or even that are even that are going to be exciting in the world coming up. First up, what is the most exciting or adventurous thing that you've ever done? <laughs> uh, you can oh, legally man. tell us. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what I, I what I would say to that right now, Dan. Um, I'm I'm literally drawing a blank. I don't know if it's because I'm just that boring or if I just am not accessing the things can we come back to that one let me see if something well, of course surfaces. we can and if, <laughs> if not if not your new answer will be i was on the dreams are real podcast and that was it <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, number two what is something that you wish you were good at but aren't yet i definitely would have to say writing novels and writing fiction or writing television fiction any, anything like that how, what steps, out of curiosity, what steps are you taking, if any, already to get better at that? I do write a little bit and I am sort of reading like the artist's way and just started that about a month ago. Um, you know, so it's kind of doing some of those things, getting stimulated any ways that I can. The artist's way, I know a number of people that I work with have found very helpful, specifically the journaling activities within there. I think it'd be good for us to link to that in the show notes. In addition to your earlier resources, that's a, that's a positive <clears throat> one for, for creatives in particular. What is the best meal or food experience that you've ever had? Oh, there's so many. Oh my gosh. I can't really say one. I'll just say that um, I feel blessed. You know, my, my dad is a fantastic cook. Um, when I was with the school of metaphysics, we would have some really great organic meals out of our garden and from different, you know, animals that we, we raised ourselves. So, and then just being at some great restaurants, I, I can't really give you one, but, uh, I will say that it's so worth it to have good food. <laughs> Fair enough. Good food. All right. Where is a place that you would like to travel that you haven't had an opportunity to do so yet? What's your dream travel destination? Mm. Again, you ask such great questions that have so many multiple answers. I'm going to say, um, I'm, I think I'm, it's kind of a tie, but I'm, I think I'm going to say I would really just like to be able to, to do a tour of Europe. Um, I mean, I've only been out of the country once, and that was to, to uh, what do you call it, uh, South, South Africa for, for an event back in 1999. But I feel like uh, I feel like Europe would be a good start because it would just be there's so many places you can go in such a short period of time. Um, so yeah, like as much of Europe as I could consume without going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, and there are certainly a lot of density and places to be able to move through Europe. I have had the opportunity to travel through Paris and London, but not a lot of the rest of Europe. And I look forward to it. You said there was a tie. Was there somewhere else or was it two places in Europe well, that were tied? Well, I guess um, the, the other ones kind of, I didn't mention it cause it's kind of vague. Um, you know, Asia, just like, I mean, China would be, there's a lot of things in China and just sort of that ancient history and culture um, Japan, you know, even like, like the Philippines, I have a good friend who has family in the Philippines. So a lot of parts of Asia would be, I think, very eye opening for me. I think it would be just transform the way I see my life. If I were to go to some of those countries, it will. 
and having done so recently, I, I can confidently say that I heartily recommend the Philippines, although the other countries that I visited were amazing. The Philippines, the, the people were so welcoming. The environment is wonderful. The perspective was amazing and the food opportunities were pretty fantastic as well. Some of the <laughs> best friends and many followers of the podcast and many members of our Dreams Are Real podcast group are from the Philippines, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again in January. Last question for this round. What do you hope or believe will be the most exciting invention of the next 30 years? I think this may be a bit fictitious, but I'm hopeful, <laughs> which is um, a teleporter, a bona fide teleporter, because <laughs> traveling can be fun, but I used to drive a lot. I used to drive a lot, and, and even sometimes flying can be pretty exhausting. So, um, you know, if there's any way we could, we could make a teleporter of any sort, or maybe even maybe just a, a, I'm hearing about some really fast jets that are sort of on the horizon that can get you to like London and from, from New York to London in like, like an hour. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that, maybe just, just faster, better transportation. <laughs> that is one of the two most common industries that the answer to this question comes from. And transportation is such a time suck in so many ways. That said, I love it when people spend their time driving and listen to the podcast. So I'm a little, little biased about maybe keeping some of it. But I, I agree. Teleportation freaks me out a little, like looking back at the transporter from Star Trek. And yet it excites me to go from one place in one, mo one moment to where I want to be in another. As we finish up our time together, I'm really appreciative that, that you have taken the time to, to sit and talk with me. And I wonder, is there a certain thought or message that you'd like to leave with our audience? Yeah, really just that, I mean, I think to reiterate your message, Dan, that anything's possible, um, that, you know, you, anything you, you can imagine can be created, uh, and even anything that you find as a limitation. I mean, we didn't really dive into much with health, but I've overcome some pretty major health areas in my life and, and healed myself of a number of things uh, and continue that journey of understanding the mind, emotion, body connection. So even, even becoming healthier is possible and not necessarily from, you know, a thousand surgeries and, and other things. But yeah, anything is possible and to, to really go for whatever you desire because uh, that's why we're here. So let's do it go after it, go get it, go get it done. As our audience may want to connect with you, where should they find you? What are you working on? How can they get to you? I am actually creating a six week master class that's going to come out in January called Purpose, Passion, and Power, Discovering Your Dharma. And I'm actually teaming a little bit with some friends of mine who do a very special type of intuitive reading called a Dharma reading. And in this Dharma reading that my students will get, they're going to find out the main qualities that they uh, have that they've built um, possibly over lifetimes and definitely in this lifetime that they can offer. And then I'm going to take people through understanding their purpose, like why they're here, what they can, what, what motivates them, their passion, what drives them and their power, so how to, how to manifest these things, how to create your life, um, and that's gonna be coming up in January, and if people wanna find out more about that, um, they can check out my website, DamianNordman.com, info at DamianNordman.com is an email, I can you know, send some more info, um, they can find me on Facebook, there's not, there's not any other Damian Nordmans, um, you can also find me, Damian Blair Zeal, uh, on Instagram, so, uh, yeah, once you kind of start, once you find me, it's hard not to find me because there's, there's no one else with that name. So <laughs> once so, you're yeah. there, you're, you're everywhere. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. We'll connect to those in the show notes, but thanks for joining us. I appreciate your story and we'll hope maybe we'll get a chance in the future to, to, as you said, dive more deeply into the metaphysical world, learn more about your health, lots of other fun things. But for now, we appreciate what you've, what you've taken the time to share. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. This has been an absolute blast. 
Thank you for joining us on the Dreams Are Real podcast. If anything we've said has inspired you to dream bigger, live more boldly, or move closer to your ideal life, please reach out and let us know. And also be sure to share this episode with a friend. We would be honored if you would like, subscribe, or leave a review for our show on your favorite podcasting platform. And for more discussion of this episode and all things related to the Dreams Are Real podcast, and to receive your free download of Dan's Defining Your North Star training, please join our Dreams Are Real community on Facebook. Until next time, be amazing and keep crushing it.